Captain Coder here, and in this guide, I'll be walking you through the process of using a tile palette and tile map in Unity to create stunning 2D scenes. This is the second video in our 2D platformer project. If you missed that video, you can find a link to it in the description below, or you can hop right in using the provided Unity package. And if you would like to be notified when the next video is out, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. Before we hop in, I want to remind you that you can ask your questions, share your projects, and join Captain Coder's Academy on Discord, or catch me live at CaptainCoder.live, where I create fun projects like this, chat with the crew, and sing you silly songs. All right, let's hop in. Now we are ready to create our platforms in our level. To do this, we're going to use tile sets. And I've prepared two tile sets. The original images, I posted a link to those from Open Game Art uh, in the description below this video. And I've prepared two sections for our tile sets that you're welcome to use. And I'm going to start by adding the summer tiles into my project here. So I'm going to take my summer tiles drop it in easy as just dragging and dropping into your project window in our assets to keep ourselves organized i'm actually going to create a folder in here called sprites sprites is sort of a fancy word if you're not familiar with a sprite is sprite is a fancy word to represent images in a 2d game and we're going to move our summer tiles into our sprites folder and then we're, you can imagine we're going to have several different types of sprites and so inside of this i'm going to create another folder called tile sets and i'm gonna move my summer tiles into tile sets here and i can actually take this and just drag it directly into a scene and you'll notice it's pretty tiny here because if i zoom in though you'll see we get a little bit of zoom in we can see that it is in fact our image here but it's super tiny and this is because by default we have 100 pixels per unit that says inside of a unit one of these squares you see this square this is our unit size in unity uh it might not if i zoom out more maybe it'll change it yeah so we have one square here is one unit we're going to fit 100 pixels inside of each of those units it's going to be depending on what your project settings are but we want to adjust our pixels per unit here this image i happen to know is 16 pixels by 16 pixels for each tile so if i set our pixels per unit to 16 and click apply it'll actually resize to a pretty nice size you may find that this is too big for you, you can set it to 32. typically you want it to be some sort of multiple of two when you're doing pixel art like this if that's too small you might even set it to eight but 16 is the size that i'm going to use You'll also notice, let's click apply here again, that the image is pretty fuzzy. It's doing some filtering on this. So if you weren't making a pixel art game, you'd want it to fuzz and do this thing called anti-aliasing where it sort of blends all of the images together. But in pixel art, we want it to be pixel perfect. So there's two things we need to do to make that happen. The first one is setting the filter mode here. So in the inspector again on our asset here, we're going to come to our inspector, come down to the filter mode and set it to point. This is no filter and click apply. You'll notice it suddenly becomes much crisper, but you'll notice that in the original image, the colors were a little bit different. And this happens to be with compression. Again, if you weren't super uh, caring that much about exactly what each picture like you want it to blend nice in a nice smooth image you wouldn't need to do this but we need to actually turn the compression off again select that tile go into the inspector come down to compression we're gonna set this to none and watch as the image colors get back to their original colors here nice and crisp there so there was three things we did after we imported our tile set we changed the pixels per unit to 16 you can adjust that to an appropriate size for your project then we change the filter mode to no filter this is the point filter and we turned off the image compression be sure to click apply to be able to see the results now it's your turn to do it now that we have our sprite configured for pixel art, it's time to turn it into individual tiles that we can position around the screen as necessary. Right now it's one big image and we can drag it around. It'd be nice to be able to take just pieces of this. Like I said before, this particular image is broken into 16 by 16 tiles that we wanna be able to place around the screen. 
we're gonna turn this into a sprite sheet. So this is a sheet that has multiple sprites inside of it. And to do this, let's select our texture in the inspector window now. We're gonna come down where it says sprite mode. We're gonna switch this to multiple. By default, it's on single. This would be an individual image. And we wanna turn it into multiple sprites. And then we're gonna click apply down here. Now it's gonna be multiple images, but we have to slice it up into proper tiles. To do this, we can use Unity's Sprite Editor. Go ahead and click Sprite Editor here. And we could manually do this. We could come in here and draw sprites. We can select, there's different ways to do it. In the top left menu here, there's this slice option. Select automatic, click slice. You're gonna get one big thing because this is all continuous. Sometimes that will work well for us. If you happen to know exactly the size of your cells and your image is set up properly, you can select grid by cell size. In this case, I happen to know that every cell is 16 by 16. So notice, now I get these red lines that look perfect for this particular sprite sheet. I'm gonna click slice here. And now, after I click apply, I end up with all of these slices in my image. If you wanted to change pivots, sometimes you might need to adjust this. For this tile set, this is gonna work exactly how we want it to. Let's go ahead and close this window now, and you'll see on our summer tile set here, if I click this little arrow next to it, it actually opens up and we have a bunch of different sprites that we can use. You'll notice that this sort of got broken a little bit here. I'm gonna go and click save just for funsies to get this to continue. Our summer tiles no longer appears here. Let's go ahead and delete that. I had two, I think I added it in there twice, I'm not sure why, but you can now take each individual sprite and drag it in here. You can even select multiple and drag the multiples in there and it'll do some weird thing where it tries to create an animation. That's not quite what we want. But you can drag these in individually and get different sprites out there. Lining them up is very, very painful. And so we're gonna use a tile map to solve that next. But before we do that, I want you to take a chance and finish your slicing on your own. Go ahead and select your summer tile set, set the sprite mode to multiple, and then slice it appropriately. Now that we have our sprite sheet sliced properly, we wanna be able to make it easy to snap all of our tiles together. You'll notice that these sort of float around in our environment and it's really hard to get them to line up, basically impossible to get them lined up. Luckily, there is a tool we can use called a tile map that will allow us to draw these on and fit them nicely into our scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these summer tiles that I've added and delete them. Let's just get rid of them. And the, before we can use a tile map, we need to actually make a tile palette. So we come up to our top menu here, we select window. We're gonna go down to our 2D section and we're gonna select tile palette. This will open up a new dialogue, a new window for us to work with. We actually need to make a new palette to use. And we're gonna use our summer tile set for this. You'll notice that right here, it's a little bit, little bit tiny, hard to read here. It says create, let me, let me highlight that, create a new palette in the drop down above. All right, so we're gonna come up here and select this drop down, create new palette, and this is gonna be our summer tile set. We wanna leave these as default rectangular and automatic cell size. We're going to click create here. And it's gonna ask us, where do we wanna put this? I'm gonna move up to my assets folder. I'm gonna actually create a new folder here called tile maps. Is tile map one or two words? I'm gonna do two words, it might be one word, who knows? Tile maps. Um, and I'm gonna set this as summer, summer tile palette. You can name it whatever you might want. Oh, it just wants me to select the folder. Select folder here. It's gonna automatically create this. So we have our summer tile set. Now we want to actually add this to our tile set. It says drag tile sprite or sprite texture assets here. You can just drag our summer tile set in. And now it's gonna ask us to save this here uh, in this folder tile set. So let's select this folder again. And it's gonna convert all of these different sprites into a grid of tiles that we can use as a palette. Now we have this nice palette here. We need somewhere to put it. If I select paint, nothing quite works. Select paint here. I don't think it's gonna let me start drawing out here yet. 
what we need to do next is actually add in a tile map where we can put things from our tile palette onto that map. So in your hierarchy, we're going to right click, go down to 2D again, select tile map, and we want to use a rectangular tile map. Choose rectangular tile map, and I'm going to call this tile map my uh, background. background. Okay, now that I have this background here. You'll notice I can paint these on here and they snap into place nicely. If we select one, it draws and it snaps to this grid very, very nicely. Another thing that you can do is make sure you're on the paint option here. There's several different options here. On the paint option, you can select a group of these things and paint that whole group. Boom, get a whole tile out there. You can select just a chunk here in the middle. Let's say that we don't want to do that big old piece there. We just want to do a slice can take a slice like this, put it on the end, drag our middle piece and boom, drag it out here, draw it out. Notice there's that line in there because it's the end piece and we'll just combine those together. So it's as simple as that to start drawing these beautiful platforms with our tile set by first creating a tile palette, then adding a tile map to our scene. Once you have that, select the paint option, select which tile you'd like to draw, and easily add those tiles into your scene. Go ahead, give it a shot now on your end. Now that we have a tile palette and a tile map that we can use to draw upon, we might want to add in different layers to add in layering effects. For example, if I wanted to draw this grass in front of this tree, I can't draw it onto my time. It's going to replace that chunk there. What I can do is I can actually add multiple tile maps to the same scene so I can add a layering effect. So we have this background here. I'm going to create two more tile maps. The first tile map I'm going to create, I guess this is really the second tile map. Uh, right click 2D object tile map rectangular. This tile map is going to be our foreground. And using this, I can actually have a second second layer to draw. Notice it's still over here. Even though I have it selected here, I need to make sure in my tile palette that I've selected the foreground layer. So be careful with that. It's a little tricky sometimes, and you might end up drawing to the wrong palette. So be very careful to make sure you're on the correct layer. And now when I draw this, it'll show up in front. This actually doesn't guarantee that it's going to be in front. Even though it's looking in front here, sometimes you might reload and it'll end up not in the right place. So what we need to do is we can actually make layers for our tile maps so that they show up in the correct order, regardless of the order that they're listed. And we can do this by creating a sorting layer that we're going to use. By default, everything is on the default sorting layer. Let's click on a layer here, our background. If we come down to the tile map renderer, you will see a sorting layer and it's on default. We need to actually add multiple layers for our tile maps. So I'm going to click on add sorting layer. It's going to open up the layers here. By default, I only have one. I want to add a new one. I'm going to make this one our background. I'm going to add another one, call it foreground. Foreground here. Okay, so we have background, we have foreground, and I'm going to make it so that our background appears below our foreground. Let's take our background here, select the sorting layer to background. Notice now because our grass is on the default layer, it appears behind it because in our layers, that one happened. I'm going to come open up my layer menu again here. The layers are going to appear in the order they're here. The default layers behind the background layer. So we need to make our foreground in front come to our foreground here. Sorting layer is going to be our foreground. And now it appears in front. Same with our player. When our player, let's move our player up here. Our player is on the default layer. If we select our player, the sprite render, it's on the default layer. Our player is now going to appear behind everything. I want my player to appear in front of the background, but behind the foreground. So again, we could have these layering effects. You have a bush in front of the player. So I'm going to come over to my layers. I'm going to add a new layer here. So it's going to be my player, player layer. And I want my player to appear between the foreground and the background. So I slide it in there in between. Now I can come to my player and I can switch its sorting layer to the player layer. And now, 
It appears in front of the background, but behind the foreground. One more thing I wanna do, I wanna actually move all my platforms to be on their own layer as well. And I want those to appear sort of at the same layer as the player or very similar to. So in this case, I'm gonna right click on my grid. I'm going to create another 2D tile map rectangular. And this is gonna be called my platforms. And I'm gonna go through it on my background. I'm gonna select my tile map one more time. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the selection tool to multi-select all these. You can click and drag, select a big chunk and delete them. Grab this chunk, delete them. Grab this chunk, delete them. And then I'm gonna to go to my platforms section now. I'm actually gonna draw out select the paint tool and draw out my platforms on this layer. Again, I'm going to have to adjust. I'm going to have to adjust this here because by default, these happen to be on a layer of their own a platform over there like this. If we come over to the inspector one more time, you'll notice that again, this is on the default layer. We could leave it there, but I actually want the player to appear behind this. It's gonna sort of appear on top of this. I'm gonna put these in the foreground or on the player. Alternatively, I could create a layer specifically for platforms. It's gonna depend on your project, how you wanna do it. You can have as many layers as you'd like. Now that you have seen the basics of setting up your sorting layers for different tile maps, I want you to see if you can do it yourself. Add a background, add a foreground, maybe add a platforms layers. What layers do you need for your project? Give it a shot. If all has gone well, you now have several tile maps positioned on various sorting layers to create a dynamic scene that has depth to it congratulations with that but before we move on i want you to solidify the knowledge you've had and i'm going to challenge you to use the winter tile set provided in the description below or another tile set of your choosing there's many to choose from maybe you can make your own you can find one on opengameart.org or anywhere else and create a new scene with it after you've made that scene i'd love to see what you made share it in the comments below or at Captain Coder's Academy on Discord, which also linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this guide helpful and I'm dying to know what you're going to do with it. Are you creating a Metroidvania? Maybe you're making a Mega Man clone. Whatever it is, I gotta know. Let me know by leaving a comment below or sharing at Captain Coders Academy on Discord. And as always, keep coding, keep growing, be the best you you can be, and you are welcome back anytime. Bye bye.